Hey guys, welcome to a first look to the scriptable rendering pipeline. Today we'll see a couple of things we can do with the scriptable rendering pipeline and one of the things that I like about it is that uh, <laughs> it's still new, it's in preview, so it get, there's a lot of things that you can do with it, uh, we just have to find out ourselves. So here's a neat little example of what I've done um, to test this out. I've actually started curving my world using a float and that float can be modified um, through the game. It's a shader, it's a normal shader, so this is actually not a shader on any of the objects right now, they have their own shader, they have their own way of rendering themselves, but this is actually a shader that's being run through the scriptable rendering pipeline. So it affects pretty much everything. Now something that was also cool is that we could affect things that are just on specific layers, so say in your game you want to highlight some specific object during a mission, you can do so with the scriptable rendering pipeline. So without further ado, let's get right into it, but not before thanking everybody who is supporting on Patreon. So thank you guys so much for the help you're actually providing on Patreon. I know I'm not really active nowadays, but the situation in India is stabilizing a little bit and uh, I'm learning so much. I'm actually learning so much stuff here at Unity. So eventually, um, when I do have some time, you are going to get some very neat information about preview stuff that is coming. And uh, yeah, <laughs> hopefully I can be the first one at that. So, Without further ado, let's get into the video. Alright, so I went ahead and I got myself a nice little scene from the asset stall, and now we gotta talk about your Unity version and also the packages version, because this is, this is actually the first problem you're going to run into when you're trying to mess around with the scriptable rendering pipeline. What Unity version you want, and also what are the package version, because it might not work, they might not fit together, and sometimes there is UI bug, there is rendering bug, there can be all type of bug that will stop you from achieving whatever you're trying to do. So let me give you out uh, my, my version, my package right now I'm using. I am on 19.3 A, so that's the alpha version, that's the most recent version as of today. And on top of that, I am also using the most recent version of the lightweight rendering pipeline. And also uh, Shader Graph, the latest version of Shader Graph. So having that out of the way, let me quickly explain that um, to use this effect, to use any of the scriptable rendering pipeline, you will need to be on LWRP or HDRP. The standard rendering pipeline is getting deprecated um, eventually, so please, let's just forget about that one, let's just move on to the new stuff. I know that if you're in production right now, you might have to use standard, but uh, just know that in the future, we are deprecating this feature. So I went ahead and installed myself LWRP, Shader Graph, and a couple of them just for fun, uh, like Cine Machine. but you don't have to do that. Okay. So having this out of the way, we have our scene, it's currently, currently um, using the forward renderer, so the default one from the lightweight rendering pipeline, and I'll just kill these two things real quick. And usually, when you just switch over to lightweight rendering pipeline, if you don't have any renderer, by default it's gonna be like this, so let me just show you your settings. Your settings should be something like that when you just switch over to lightweight rendering pipeline. So you might have your old shaders and your old material being deprecated, like so. If they are being deprecated, if you're not actually able to render anything um, like I am right now, chances are you might be able to recover it by going under Edit, Render Pipeline, and Upgrade Project Material to Lightweight Rendering Pipeline, which is going to try and convert your old material to the new way of rendering with lightweight. Now, okay, so it says we don't have any rendering pipeline. That's totally true. We have nothing right now. We should be using the default one at the least. But there's no default one in this case. So what do we do here? Well, to get started, we have to create ourselves a new render pipeline setting object. So a scriptable render pipeline setting object. That's what its name over here. But when you try to create it within your asset, your project folder, it's actually named something different. So let me show you real quick. Let's right click, go under rendering, lightweight render profile, and we want a pipeline asset. So I'm going to go ahead and declare this, it's going to be my scriptable render pipeline asset settings. Okay, you can name it whatever you want, I just took the long way. And now you're going to drag and drop this here, oh, I missed it, like so. And then from that point on, if you have upgraded materials, so let's have a look over here. If my materials are upgraded, then you're going to see something like this. So lightweight rendering pipeline, and this is maybe like a standard. No, this is actually a lit. Um, if you have material that are under this specific shader or any shader within this section, then you'll be able to see something. 
if your material are old school, if they're using the standard, so standard, it's gonna go back to being pink. So obviously, as I've said earlier, if you have some standard material, try to go over here and update them with our tool. Our tool does a very good job of finding um, what it can convert to what. So make sure you give it a try if you're using the new pipelines. That being said, we now have a descriptable rendering pipeline. We know that if we click on it, we have the inspector saying this is using a forward renderer. Right now, this is the only one we have built in, but eventually we'll have different renderer as well. Um, and then you have some quality settings, lighting, all that kind of stuff that you can play around with. But this is not what we're interested in today. We are actually interested in the renderer type over here because we have a custom option. Now, if we are to press on this, you're gonna find out that Okay, so you're looking to create yourself your own rendering pipeline, that's totally fine. Let's use the one we have by default. So by default, we have the forward renderer data. Not gonna be using that today, we're actually going to create our own. So let's do that by right-clicking on asset, create, rendering, and we wanna create ourselves. The menu is a little bit buggy sometimes. We wanna create ourselves. okay, the menu is a little bit buggy most of the time. A forward renderer. You can also create a 2D, we did that um, in the past. 2D lets you have 2D lights, it's pretty cool. So this one over here, you have to think about it like some sort of group of paths or list of passes. So what's going to happen to your mesh after it's being rendered in this case? So imagine you're rendering your object completely. Then after that, what do you want your object to do? What kind of rendering do you want after, after it's being rendered? Um, this is the initial mindset you have to go into. So we had a nice little video that was showing outline. So we pretty much did this. We went over a scriptable rendering pipeline asset. We put our outline, that was our, um, our passes list, you could say. And then over here, down here, after everything was being rendered, we then add another rendering feature, which was putting a outline. So this is what we've done for the outline. And let me actually do it in front of you very, very quickly. We're first going to name this outline, per se. And then we need to create ourselves a material. So I'm not gonna be using the shader pass um, section of it today, simply because it's not really working with what I'm trying to do. And also creating your shader without shader graph right now. Uh, creating your pass without shader graph is a real, real mess. It's actually quite complicated. So instead we'll be using the material override, which means I will need to create myself a material that will do what I want my pass to do. So this could be a outline material. Now, I'll give you an example, without creating an outline, uh, what I'll do is I'll quickly just put a red color on this thing, and then we'll go over here, say outline, boom. Now you'll notice that there's actually no change, and that's because the, the actual override that we've done, so the override we're doing to this very specific, uh, well, the whole rendering pipeline, basically, is actually being applied to nothing. So, let's actually toggle everything, see what happens. Oof, okay, so what... <laughs> It's quite disgusting, but now everything has been overridden. So the whole thing, they have their own material, they have their own way of rendering things. If we click on this very specific object over here, sorry if it's hard on the eyes. Um, if we click at this group, then we see that they all have their own way of rendering. They all have the base color, they have different base color, but at the end of the day, they have to follow what we say through the rendering pipeline, so they're being rendered to red. Now this works on every layer, it's actually a layer base. So if we say, hey, these objects in the middle of the game, we could say, hey, these objects, let's highlight them with something specific. Let's say they're mission object now. Well, let's just switch its UI and say it's a um, current mission. And I'm gonna go ahead and take this, that, that, and we are going to put them on the current mission and hopefully the changes are being affected to the children, there it is. And now I can say, hey, only affect Current mission object. Uh, does that give you any ideas for your game? <laughs> because it sure does to me. Uh, and now, of course, this is just a simple color override, but if you wanted to do something a little bit more specific... Oh, and by the way, also note that um, it's actually... How do I say that? It's actually being rendered twice. Um, that's something that's actually quite important for you to know. So this is actually being rendered twice. Well, let me give you an example of, um, of what I mean right here. So we only have four objects being um, red right now. We have only these four groups of object. What the real thing is going on is that we have these four objects already there with the right color. And then on top of that, we create a new render pass that render them again. 
So very quickly, what I'll do is I'll actually put that back on nothing, and then I'll say to my forward renderer, render nothing. Okay, fair enough, we're rendering nothing. Now only render current mission. What I'm trying to show over here is that our forward renderer is rendering everything right now. So everything, and we like it that way. We want to have our base color, we want to have the material information be right, and, and that kind of deal. Now we could say, hey, let's not render current mission. But they still exist within memory, they still have a collider, you just don't render them, which is totally fine because we'd like to render them with our shader pass over here. So let's go over here and uh, toggle current mission again. And other thing is being rendered properly. And in case, just in case this thing is no longer a part of the current mission, put that back on default. And then the forward renderer will take care of rendering this, and then after that, you know, um, my, my override is not gonna do anything about it. So that's one of the nice way you could control things um, with the, the, the scriptable rendering pipeline. Now this is an example that just turned things to red, but whatever happens, this object is actually being controlled by this material. So if we said, hey, okay, we have a bunch of unlit stuff in the scene, but these one, we want them to be lit with this material, then you could go ahead and say, hey, let's use the lit material instead. Oh wait, no, I was. Okay, let's use the unlit material. <laughs> and you have this kind of uh, behavior being applied to everybody. Now, um, what I'm going to show next is my curve shader. All right, so I've reverted my scene to what it once was. And what I'm gonna be doing now is I'm going to be creating myself a, um, not, not one for outline, we actually didn't do outline, we just did color override, but I've created myself a new shader that actually applies the global curve. So as I drag and drop this object around the center point, and the center point, as you can see over here, it's zero, 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 zero. So it's right in the center of my scene, which is, roughly around here, right? So as I drag this, you're gonna see that my shader, actually what it does is, it's simple, it's very simple. The further away it is from the, the point in space, so the center point, it's simply going to go up. So if I was to apply this on every single object like so, you see that it curves in that direction. And now I also have a script on my player that makes sure to change this property at runtime. So let me quickly check, is it there? Yep, set position at runtime and I just have to put my material. That's why it didn't work. Then I'll just put the player say in the center over here. And I'll do note that this is not uh, through the scriptable rendering pipeline. It's simply using the, the forward renderer, the normal one. And then as I walk towards stuff, it goes down and as I walk away from it, it should curve up. And also do note that the material is only being applied right now to um, this thing, the Terran. Now, what's really cool with this is, say we're trying to make a 3D runner, when we did the Penguin game, we had to actually curve the world in front of us, just like every single 3D runner does nowadays. It's curving down, or it's curving up, depending on which one you like the best. Um, assuming that you don't actually have to create a shader and put that shader on everything, you could go through the scriptable rendering pipeline and have this kind of result. So now, I'll actually disregard pretty much everything I've done a second ago. So I'll go in and revert the material. And we're gonna apply the same exact effect, but this time we'll be applying it through the scriptable rendering pipeline. So let's go under project settings. Let's make sure we have the proper one. So yep, that's the one. Now we need to have a custom renderer that isn't the default one, that isn't the forward renderer data. So let's create ourselves a new one, rendering forward renderer. So this is going to be for the global curve renderer. And from that point on, since my material is not 100%, not my material, my shader is not, it's a work in progress. It's not completely done right now. I'm going to make sure I don't render anything with the forward renderer and actually take care of rendering through my list over here, my list of render feature. And one more thing, I'll make sure to set my global curve renderer to the data. So now, this is being applied. Um, so obviously there is a problem with that. I'll, I'll talk about it in a moment, but first let's add the render feature. Here's my experimental render feature. I'll call it, this is the curve. And what I want is I want to affect everything. So now we're, going, we're getting back to this, right? We're getting back to the default one. We have no override. We have no new shader pass. And I want to say, hey, let's apply the global curve. And as I do this, you're going to realize that now everything changed color, and I'll talk about that in a second, but also everything got 
the bump. We got the bump around the center. And now if I want to control this bump, I can actually just control one material in my scene that does that. Like so. Okay, so what's the problem with this? Well, obviously the color did not stay. So um, the problem with this is, is because we have a material overrun. So what's happening right now is that, yes, we are changing the position and I'm doing that through shader graph, but we're also changing the material because in shader graph, you have the option to, yes, modify the vertex position, but also modify the albedo of the texture and also the lighting of it and so much different things. You can also put things on, on zero alpha. Um, you, you see why this is a problem, right? So the way you want to be doing this in the future is instead of doing what we're doing right now with the material override, we would be adding a shader pass. However, my knowledge of shader is very, very limited. Um, it's been a really long time since I haven't made a shader, especially now that we have to use the lightweight rendering pipeline or the HDRP. So in the future, you want to be adding a, a shader pass over here instead, and then that pass would be taken care of just modifying the vertex position, but not the albedo. Okay. All right, so that's pretty much the information I have right now about the scriptable rendering pipeline. It's not much, but you can start playing around with it. It's very experimental. As I said, you need to have the right version for it to even work. Um, I think the thing where you can toggle layers on and off and maybe add an outline or add some additional rendering on top of it, or if you want, you can also have a look at this video. They give you some very good example of what you can do. The outline was also specified over here. Um, you can have a look at these things and they are quite, quite helpful. This video is called Introduction to Lightweight Rendering Pipeline. And they have example like this one. So as the character goes behind the tower, you're rendering it again. So yes, you are rendering the character when he's behind, but then you don't see him anymore. Um, so what they do is they, have, they do an additional rendering in front of everything. And uh, that's one of the example. So that's one of the example. They also done outline, which looked very, very good. Um, yeah. So that's pretty much it. I'll show you the shaders now, so let's go have a look. I actually had two, one for a single direction and also one for the global direction. So that's a global curve, but I had to create one for the 3D runner. So here is the shader and I'll try to explain as best as I can. Here is what we've done. We took the world position of our object. So imagine that's every single vertex of the terrain, of the everything, that's just one vertex. And then we did a split because I need the Y axis at different places. Now this whole block over here, what it does is that it takes the distance. It gives me the distance at the end. That's the mile, but it gives me the distance um, after the distance before the curve. So imagine this is my, my world. And over here is where I want my curve to start. So I take this very point, And then what I do is I start calculating like what's the distance from that point. So if my vertex is somewhere around here, Maybe it's one meter. If it's around there, it's two meter. If it's there, it's minus one, but I clamp it back to zero. So I make sure to get the distance after my curve. And then I add that in Y on top of what I currently have. So if my vertex position in Y is three and I am one meter away from the start of the curve, then my vertex position in Y is gonna be four. It's very, very simple. And then I add it all together again and I make sure to convert my world position back in object position before I render. I also put the checkerboard. Don't have to put the checkerboard actually, <laughs> but I like to do that. Um, and then of course, when I hit save, this type of thing happened. So my curve, if my distance in between the curve, you can see it, it's right here. Right after that, it starts getting that bump. And that's pretty much it. So you can create some sweet effect with that. Um, also, one thing I've done for that very specific object is that I made sure to create myself a script that would set the position of that curve when my player moves. So as my player moves around, my center also changes. And that's done very, very easily with this type of script. So I just do a set vector. Vector to modify is the name of my property, which you can find over here on the blackboard. So I change it to center. I change this and I change the vector in it, which means as I'm moving around every single frame, it's going to be updating the material itself. So it's actually updating the material, which is why um, when you close the engine, then uh, the center is still at a different spot. So as you can see, the world is moving with me. And as I stop moving, it stops moving too. And that is pretty much it, guys. So thank you very much for watching. I hope I can get back to you fairly, fairly soon with the 
uh, improved shader with the version 3 of this shader, <laughs> something that's going to be very, very nice to look at. And also, we'll also use the material um, that you put through the inspect. Uh, so again, I'd like to thank everybody who is supporting me on Patreon and everybody who's talking on Discord. And I'll see you guys very, very soon, either on Discord, this channel, or the personal one, guys. Thank you so much for watching once more, and I'll see you soon. I said that already. Okay. Goodbye.